Okay, so I'm here today with Niklas from Duality. And Duality is a potential consumer chain for the for the Cosmos Hub. Uh, I think Duality is going to launch in, uh, in third place uh, after Neutron and Stride. And today is kind of the coming out party for Niklas and the team. Uh, I don't think you've done a lot of interviews so far. People, uh, people have seen uh, Duality coming up on Twitter, I'm sure. Uh, you guys have posted a couple of good stuff uh, that um, some people will, will, will have seen. But today we want to we really start from the beginning and see you know, who is Duality, uh, what are you guys building, why is it different from the other Cosmos DEXs we have out there. And uh, yeah, a bit of a bit of a deep dive into duality. So, Niklas, first, I think yeah, it would be great if you can introduce yourself and um, and the rest of the team, the rest of the team at Duality. Who who, who are you um, in general? Yeah, of course. Hi, nice to be here. Um, I am uh, I am Nicholas. I'm working on uh, uh, on duality. I am uh, currently the the CTO, and I am. Uh, just excited, excited to excited to be here. And so around, about the team, the team behind Duality uh, and how it came together, it's uh, uh, more a team of uh, of developers uh, and researchers, uh, Web two and Web three native that came together kind of serendipitously. Uh, the original, the original kind of design of Duality was a was a um, was an on chain on Ethereum type type version. And uh, we came together with, uh, it was me, it's uh, Elijah, which is my other co-founder, uh, who is a very, very smart uh, researcher um, and an AMM expert in many ways. Um, and we were working on the idea simultaneously in many ways. And then we, we came together and we decided to join forces and obviously have come a long way since then. Um, we moved uh, away from Ethereum and into Cosmos for many reasons that I'm happy to happy to go through in this call. Um, and we've been growing our team. We have uh, Web2 founders, um, very, very good um, Web3 knowledge and background. So we're, uh, we're, we're kind of all here um, improving existing systems together. What are maybe some, some people will be familiar with the, the project that you work with, that you and Elijah and maybe some other people on the team worked with in the past. I think there was Balancer, right? Yeah, Elijah's actually worked, uh, had done some work for Balancer and Trader Joe and some other some other decentralized exchanges. Um, I've worked on DeFi in the past with uh, with decentralized bridging, and uh, I was at Element Finance before this and uh, Consensus before that. So um, yeah, so you guys are building a Dex, uh, and as you probably know, there's a, it's, you're not the first one in Cosmos. I think there's like a ten-ish Dex, right? Like we we we've had Sif Chain, we have a, obviously Osmosis. There's a Say Network uh, coming up soon. There's, uh, you know, Kujira, uh, you, you name it. So like we have a bunch. Um, and so I wanted to know from your perspective, like where do you think uh, Duality fits into that? And how are you guys going to be able to differentiate yourself in this kind of uh, overwhelming amount of, uh, of DEXs? The way, the, way the way we kind of approach um, how we're building, where we're building and why we're building it is more from a position of what is it that we want to see materialized in the long term? where we are now and what, we, what can we do to improve it. So as I did mention, we were initially a project that we were supposed to launch on Ethereum. Uh, in fact, we had, uh, we had our smart contracts developed. We were looking, we were looking at auditors, um, all the appropriate systems that needed, that were needed to, to back the functionality of our decentralized exchange. And, uh, you know, that got us to thinking a little bit about what is actually the end version of what we're trying to build? What does it do? What does it look like? Um, we did conclude that um, a lot of the features that we did want on the DEX, whether that be you know um, routing internally, MEV recapture, um, et cetera, that was all quite challenging to do on Ethereum. Uh, that being said, what we're doing right now is we're, we're very much focusing on on we're doubling down on the the benefits given to us via this this Cosmos launch. Uh, duality is. Um, is not the same as a like as a traditional AMM or as a traditional order book. It's kind of a hybrid between the two. Yeah, I think you guys have a bunch of very unique features, and that's what I I want to I want to get to. Um, one of them is going to be the MEV recapture. Uh, this is called multiplicity. 
Can you can you briefly explain in a, in a few words? I don't want to go too deep into multiplicity. I prefer that we focus on the order book part on on, on this call. Maybe we'll have you back uh, when you guys are get get closer to actually launching multiplicity. Uh, but let's start with that one anyway. Uh, what is multiplicity, and you know what, why is it different from, for instance, what uh, Osmosis is doing with Skip on um, on the Osmosis chain? Uh, so with you mean uh, Proto Rev on Osmosis? Yeah. Got yeah. it. Yeah. So. Uh, just to clarify a couple of things, multiplicity is the name of the initial consensus gadget uh, that brings censorship resistance to most proof of, proof of stake uh, consensus algorithms. Um, so by solving the problem of censorship, we can solve the issue of transaction inclusion in a block. Um, so let's let's break it down a little bit because um, I think it it, it, become, it can become a little bit a little bit complicated, and I want to I want to make it as uh, as simple as possible. Um, the reason on-chain auctions and proof of stake systems um, are challenging to implement right now is because the block builder essentially has a monopoly on what transactions are included in the block. Um, that means that they are under no obligation to, um, to correctly run an auction. They can front run trades, they can copy trade, they can, uh, um, they can steal trades if they want. Like, uh, it's uh, it's very incentive misaligned, and it's really difficult to run a purely on-chain auction securely and um, and uh, consistently. So, if you have a consensus gadget that enforces inclusion of a transaction in a block, you can effectively remove uh, the censorship powers of the validators. And once we have solved the um, once we have solved this uh, this transaction inclusion issue, um, and we know for a fact that transactions can't be censored. Uh, the transaction with the highest bid can be placed first if the end result is an auction. There is a there's a saying that um, MEV is not about uh, ordering, it's about inclusion. And if you can guarantee inclusion, then the ordering is just a function of the on-chain logic. So if your if your if your chain has uh, if your binary chain binary and now the application level has logic that says, hey, this block is only valid if these transactions with the highest bid are placed first then you have an on-chain auction. And the value of that auction can then be used by the protocol however it wants. In this case, it can be redistributed back to LPs. The quick point I wanted to make is that multiplicity is a censorship resistance gadget. Using it to capture MEV via an auction is an extension of that. Um, there are also different ways to achieve this, like potentially uh, utilizing vote extensions. Um, finding the best way forward here is extremely important to us because it's in many ways is bigger than, than duality. Uh, so we were actually partnering with Skip to find the best way forward here. And I think because uh, uh, they did announce uh, protocol owned builders, um, which is uh, in in uh, in a very similar, actually two parts of the same coin here. So joining for joining forces with Skip in this case, it's, a, it's extremely exciting. We get to work on this together and uh, actually bring something new to uh, to the ecosystem as a whole, which which is great. Um, yeah. But yeah. in terms of, oh, sorry, go ahead. Yeah, exactly. I think this is what I wanted to get to, is that these things are not competitive, they are complementary. Um, you know, we, we're going to have an episode on the, on vote extension because we are, we are the committee that formal is, is building that. Uh, and so we, we are going to give uh, the background necessary to understand you know, all the moving pieces on, the, on, on a future episode. And uh, maybe I'll have you back to talk specifically about multiplicity. Today, I want to talk, um, I want to talk specifically about what I think is going to be essentially the killer feature for duality. Um, at the at the beginning, at the very least, way when you guys launch, and that's the uh, the the um, you know uh, hybrid order book AMM uh, kind of feature design that that you guys have uh, essentially came up with, and I think uh, as you mentioned, the reason you guys switch from uh, from Ethereum to Cosmos. Um, so let's talk about that today, and let's focus on that. Um, maybe let's let's you know let's assume no knowledge whatsoever. Maybe not, not whatsoever. Let's assume minimum knowledge from our listeners. Um, can you differentiate what is an order book? What is an AMM? And then we'll, uh, in a separate question, we'll address, you know, how, how you guys fit into, like, what, what exactly, what spots duality is occupying on, on, on this spectrum? Yeah, so I guess I don't, I don't really have formal definitions of what an order book or an AMM is, but uh, I, I know it intuitively, if that helps. So um, an order book is basically a, is a way to trade assets. It's a way that it's a way for somebody to same as an AMM. It's a way for you to to use existing liquidity and um, and uh, you know trade through it. So with an with an order book, you have uh, you have users that are providing 
that are asking to sell their um, their assets, say um, asset one and asset two are the two assets being traded in, in an order book. Um, users are selling asset one for a certain amount of asset two, and users are also selling asset two for a certain amount of asset one and predetermined prices. The common term here is uh, a term that probably every, everyone must have heard is the, the spread, which is what is the difference between um, the price, the lowest price of asset one and the lowest price of asset two. Um, so that, that spread is basically the, the, the price difference or in many ways, slippage potentially. Um, so the in, in an order book, you can think about it as like a set of limit orders uh, at a current price that anybody can fill. Um, with with an AMM, the difference is that once your liquidity is filled, it doesn't go away. It stays there to be filled again, um, but from a different from a different uh, from a different asset. So if I have a if I have an AMM uh, and my AMM has um, you know asset one and asset two, if I provide liquidity, I provide fifty percent of asset one, fifty percent of asset two. Somebody can come in and depending on my invariant and my trading function. Um, which is actually the key here, which we'll get into. Um, users can trade asset one by providing asset two, and then users can also trade asset two by providing asset one. Um, so the liquidity doesn't really go away. It stays there, but the composition of the liquidity switches. Um, in an order book, if you buy the liquidity, it's gone. Um, that is the that is kind of the main difference. Yeah. So in duality, the reason we say we're kind of a hybrid is because of our invariant. It's um, it's a constant sum invariant. That might uh, that might sound uh, a little bit uh, a little bit confusing, but it, it's really not. All it means is that you provide liquidity at a given price, and all your liquidity can be traded at that given price on that pool. Pools are do not consist of a single trading function. It's actually a pool is comprised of many constant sum pairs that compose together to create larger pool. It's just like an order book, the same way an order book can have um, many individual prices internally uh, and you trade through them. And then once you're exhausted that liquidity at that point, then you go to the worst price and worst price until the liquidity is exhausted all the way up. It works very similarly here. Um, the difference, however, is that in a constant, in a constant sum pair, when your liquidity is crossed over, it actually moves to the other side of the liquidity. So if someone buys your asset one for asset two, now you, you hold the asset two and it's still for sale on the other side. It just transfers uh, transfers the liquidity to the other side of the order book. And um, this way, if you provide liquidity properly, uh, the, the fees you earn, um, you earn fees every single time your liquidity is crossed over. So that's the, that's the very simple version of why duality is kind of a hybrid between an AMM and an order book. And I can give a little bit more clarity on how that works internally. Of course, let, let's let's uh, let's try, try to you know paint the landscape here. Right now in Cosmos, and maybe uh, you can you can also reference a couple of um, Ethereum dexes. Uh, who is doing AMM? Who is doing order books? The biggest um, AMM kind of on on Ethereum being Uniswap v three uh, is also a. In, in some ways, a hybrid between an, an AMM and an order book. The reason, uh, and I'd love to use uh, Ethereum uh, and uh, Uniswap v3 as an example to, to further define duality a little bit. But mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, Ethereum would probably be my, uh, sorry, Uniswap would probably be my, uh, my number one uh, point here as to a great example of uh, fantastic mechanism design and, uh, and, um, and a great product that, uh, that uses uh, that uses a similar but not 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 the same exact model. Um, on on Cosmos, um, Osmosis is uh, currently an AMM, not 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 an order book. However, they are launching concentrated liquidity, which is uh, um, I'm not entirely sure what the design looks like there. I'm not sure if it's going to be like a stable swap or uh, or a uh, Uniswap v3 like clone. Um, then there's um, like order books specifically are a little bit difficult to do on on Ethereum because they're more computationally expensive, uh, but it's okay on Cosmos because you know computation is cheaper and we have more more control over what we can do. Yeah, I think uh, so. To fill in here, like Kujira is doing an order book, uh, Say is also doing an order book. Mm -hmm. um, I think these are like names people will be familiar with. 
Uh, Osmos is currently uh, an AMM. Um, yeah, I think uh, I think uh, you know Balancer and um, uh, Ave. Uh, sorry, not Ave. Uh, what's the other curve? Uh, these are these are AMMs, right? Those are yes, those are AMMs exactly. Okay, yeah, ju just for people to like uh, visualize a little bit more what, what we're talking about. So let's talk about the Uniswap V3. I think it's an interesting point. Like, what's uh, what is uh, what is different? If was, I think it's is gonna is gonna be inspired by is directly inspired, you know, uh, working on implementing something very similar to Uniswap V3. Uh, how is this different from what Duality is doing? So Uniswap V3 under the hood, when you provide liquidity, you get to choose a range. Say this is your range. Um, and you get to provide liquidity evenly throughout that range. But in order to provide liquidity evenly throughout that range, under the hood, what happens is that there is a tick spacing. So it's, you don't provide liquidity infinitely throughout that range. You provide it in discrete intervals in that range. Um, and it has to be even. So with Uniswap v3, in many ways, those individual ticks that you provided liquidity to internally are, are an order book. Um, and that order book, as you trade through it, it changes the composition of the assets. Um, and there's also some, you know, intertick slippage. It's not exactly a constant sum. Uh, it is a, um, it is a, um, it is a unique type of calculation to, to define the slippage internally. Uh, the difference here is that we actually don't enforce any type of, any type of distribution or any type of, um, you know, tick, uh, tick allocation. So if I wanted to provide just a single point of liquidity, I can. If I want to provide in a range, but make it look like a bell curve, I can. If I want to provide, uh, if I want to provide more or less ticks, uh, I can do that as well. And effectively using these constant, constant price pools, sorry, constant sum pools, also constant price pools, but using these constant sum pools, I'm able to approximate any trading function I want. Like if I want something that acts like a curve, what I can do is I can provide my liquidity in a bell curve uh, with more liquidity in the middle, um, and um, and yeah, if I wanted to, if I wanted something that looks like Uniswap V2 or Osmosis V1, I would provide it evenly across the whole range, but that would not be extremely efficient. Um, but yeah, it's just giving it's just giving a high amount of um, expressibility and granular control to the end user, um, and you know you can have uh, they can use the they can use the uh, liquidity provision uh, the way they want, exactly the way they want. If right. they want to edit their position, they can move individual ticks. Um, they could remove individual ticks. Um, it just becomes a uh, uh, like a, a smoother smoother experience. This is again only possible because we're on Cosmos too. This would be a smoother, really tough. A smoother experience uh, for when you say users. Here, I think you refer to the liquidity providers, right? Exactly. Yes. The traders. Well, actually. Two sides of the same point again in many ways. So, uh, given given this design, we're able to. Uh, when I say we're a hybrid between an AMM and an order book, is if you want to use this as an AMM, you can. If you want to use duality as an order book, you also can. So that means is um, I can create just limit orders and compose them together, and effectively you have an order book entirely order book functionality. You can you can create a um, you can create a position that replicates a an AMM curve. Now we're entirely AMM functionality. Um, you know, we're we've added some new order types for better expressibility for for users. Uh, there's like fill or kill, uh, timeout on cancel, uh, just in time, good till canceled, uh, good till date, etc. These uh, order types that are quite common in traditional finance, uh, we can bring them in for more expressibility and uh, uh, for the for the trader. Uh, the goal here is to keep the ceiling high, but the floor low in terms of uh, in terms of usability. As a user, why would I ever use an AMM versus an order book? So, as a user, honestly, you would the only thing you really care about is what the price you're getting out of it is. It doesn't matter at the, like at, on, at the end of the day, if an order book is giving you better prices, there's no reason to use an AMM over an order book. If an AMM is giving you better prices, it doesn't matter if you're using an order book or an AMM. Uh, right. The um, uh, where this matters is the the liquidity providers, their strategy, and their um, their uh, revenue models. Yeah. 
Good. I think that was a good explanation of uh, you know the unique value proposition for for duality. I want to switch to the most interesting topic of uh, this uh, whole interview, which is uh, ancient security, obviously. And so here, what I what I want to what I want to ask you is first. Um, so obviously, personally, I've been following this process quite closely, uh, but I'm interested to hear from from your side. You know, there was like a there was some uh, some I guess uh, back a little bit of back and forth uh, between us at Informal and you uh, at Duality, where uh, there was some interest, and then maybe the the interest cooled down a little bit, and then the interest came back, and that was that was like fun to follow because I, I saw you guys like going through the process of you know seeing the uh, value proposition for ICS bit by bit. Um, so what's uh, first? Let's let's define the landscape here. You explain why Cosmos, why now why why engine security? Why why do you think this is a this was a good move in the first place? So the value that interchain security brings is um, is very clear, uh, but the problem we had initially was more around incentive alignment. To launch on interchain security, you need the governance proposal to pass. Uh, for the governance proposal to pass, you need the validators to to pass it, and for the validators to pass it, they need to want to pass it. I mean, I, I know this sounds I know this sounds silly, but this is uh this is this is uh this is the case. To get to get validators to want to to okay this uh this proposal, what is it that we need to do? Uh what value do we provide that is higher than the value that they are losing by running duality as a consumer chain? And that is the question that haunted us for a little bit. How do we become something that the hub truly wants and the validators are excited to to run us as overhead. So that got us a little bit down that path, and I think we figured it out at this point. And I'm happy. I'm very happy to get into that. But um, but yeah, the the kind of the incentive misalignment there in terms of hey, like we're a chain, we're launching on we're launching on uh, on interchain security. Uh, now you need to kind of pay for our binary, pay to run our binary. That just didn't didn't really make much sense. And we didn't see directly what value we're providing to them to make it worth their time. That makes a lot of sense. So essentially, just to summarize, it's like the the, the idea is that you you were seeing the value position that you uh, would get from insurance security, but you didn't see enough what you would bring back. For me, it was pretty clear from the beginning that there was some massive uh, things that you guys bring to the table and that I'm super, I'm super excited about uh, the duality you know, uh, governance proposal. I will, um, I will be part of this process, and uh, I will definitely, you know, uh, support it. Um, on uh, on the other side of this equation, like what uh, what did you like about about internet security? Um, obviously, like everyone knows about economic security. I think we can skip that one. What else? Uh, what else excites you? And you know, made it like a good um, a good option for duality. Right. So the the obviously the, the the big one is what you just talked about, which is the. Um, you know the the security model here. So duality can be secure on day one, uh, right off the bat. Um, and this is another big one, by the way, which you you, you said we should uh, glaze over, but I don't think we should. Which is launching without a token. Um, that's actually extremely important as to uh, as it's a big part of what we bring back to the hub on day one. Um, another another more niche, uh, another little slightly more niche uh, aspect of what interchain security can bring is that. Uh, you know, since since all consumer chains are secured by the same validator set, the risk assumptions of IBC transfer and bridging um, become a lot more favorable because you don't have um, non-overlapping sets of validators that, uh, that that need to sign messages and be secure and need to be trusted between each other. So um, IBC communication between between uh, ICS chains is uh, um, does not have any additional security overhead, uh, which is fantastic, but um, the kind of the biggest the biggest plus here, uh, which is um, kind of brings us back to what we can bring to the hub, is this really gives us an opportunity to align with the hub long term and as a, as a, in general. Uh, aligning with the hub here is um, is very valuable. We get benefit uh, duality, not not duality uh, duality labs, but like duality as a as a product as a platform gets benefit off the off the Cosmos hub. But the Cosmos Hub should also get benefit off of Duality. So in this specific case, um, um, Duality will forfeit all fees to to the to the Cosmos Hub. All MEV will go back to LPs, and all governance value 
they'll be controlled by uh, by Adam. We want to make this a a public good, and in many ways, a public good for uh, for the Cosmos Hub. Sure, a lot of people will be very happy to hear what you just said. Um, let's uh, let's let's uh, come back to the token because you're right. That's that's actually something we should uh, spend a little bit of time on. Um, so what uh, what are the uh, what is the plan there? Uh, that's one of the unique aspects of ICS for sure. Um, what? Uh, why didn't you guys want to launch a token? Is there any token for in the future? Maybe. Um, can can you can you can you talk to us a little bit more about the token strategy for for duality? Uh, so we actually don't want a token right now, and that is uh, that is another really appealing part about the Cosmos Hub. Uh, so token val tokens have value because um, because they they govern the protocol. Um, they're used to pay fees, um, and they're in many ways kind of like a, an instrument for for that. If we can offload that value and bring it back to Atom, that is a um, that is a boost to to the Atom token in general. Um, so that is in part the governance value there is in part something we we bring back to the back to the Cosmos sub and back to Atom. That sounds amazing. I think a lot of people will will like that a lot. Uh, what exactly that, does that mean? Like in practice, I think there's a there's a couple of things here that you can expand on uh, in terms of uh, you know what uh, what would be the base pair. I'm guessing this this could be Adam. Um, and what else can you do with ICS that you think is of is of interest for duality in in terms of you know getting the Cosmos hub like maximizing the value that you get from the hub. Okay. Yeah. So at the end of the day, being a public good uh, just means that the Cosmos hub extracts kind of all the value from the stacks, um, all of it. So as we mentioned before, that means all the fees, all the MEB, all the governance value. Um, it is a it, it is a way for the hub to own its own liquidity again. It's a way for the hub to um, to have uh, pairs denominated in Atom, um, and for the hub to actually have a a product that is uh, um, that is very expressive for for users to use, and that can be used for a bunch of different things. Um, so obviously a way to a way to um, a way to bootstrap this and make this uh, make this a little bit more uh, more robust would be through um, through liquidity incentives. What we do have uh, on duality right now is a uh, actually we're we're almost done developing it. It's currently on the testing phase and should be audited in uh, in April is a an external incentives module where teams that want to deploy liquidity on on duality since duality won't have a token, uh, teams that want to deploy liquidity on duality can incentivize it with their own native token. I just want to underline how awesome that is that uh, a public good decks for the Cosmos Hub where the base pair is Atom, where the fees are being paid in Atom. Uh, I just want to make sure that the audience understand the importance of that. And the fact that it's really the first, it's going to be the first decks. Uh, right now on Osmosis, everything is paired with Osmo. Um, it's going to be the first time, I think, in, in, the, in the history of Cosmos that we have a... Um, uh, the decks that you know prioritize Atom as a as an asset. So um, there's that. That's um, that's something um, that should be that should be said and reset and re reset. Yeah, Niklas, I want to I want to come back to the token strategy uh, and in general, I guess the the uh, the bigger part of the duality strategy. Um, no token. First, let me ask you, why do you think that matters? Why do you think that's something that uh, projects would want uh, the ability to launch without a token? I think I think the token, you know, sometimes for VCs is something that is quite important. Um, what do you think for you specifically? What do you think this is? Uh, this is actually something that you guys would would want to do, uh, launching without a token. Uh, there are actually a few reasons for this, um, and sure, we can hit all of them. One is tokens are just a lot of overhead. Um, it is it is we're we're a fairly small team. It's a lot to manage. It's a lot to to deal with. Um, and we open ourselves up to, we just open up a large can of worms there that we'd rather keep closed for now. Um, two is having a token actually makes it a lot less of a public good for Atom. Um, if the token is Atom, then, then all the, the value our token would have had goes to Atom right away. Um, and then three is we... We get to preserve our optionality here. Um, like there's there's many directions duality can take in the future, uh, whether that be on an L2, whether that be maintaining different deployments, expanding across ecosystems, 
Um, in that case, we don't know exactly what the future is like. And I, I want to emphasize that as, uh, you know, being one thing that is, uh, I think, very attractive to the consumer chain teams is that ICA doesn't really lock you in, right? Like you still have the option to go and launch your own sovereign chain, like whatever you build as a consumer chain is immediately reusable as a, as a, as a sovereign chain. And if at some point in time you want to launch your token and you want to, you want to have the staking option, that is still something that is, that is available to you. Um, so ICS like doesn't lock you in into one particular, you know, setup, um, uh, you can become a roll-up for that matter, for what, for, you know, for what it works. Uh, so I think it's a, it's a, it's a good thing to underline. Um, the, the, other thing that I've been discussing with a lot of consumer chain is how they could integrate with each other. Um, and there's one team that is going to launch quite soon. It's uh, the Stride team. Um, can you talk a little bit a little bit about the plans that we discuss here uh, with uh, the Stride team integration? Uh, so the the Stride team is uh, just for some background. They're bringing staked Atom to to to, to the hub. Uh, in fact, we've already brought staked Atom to the to the uh, to the Cosmos ecosystem, but now they're going to be interchain secured. Um, staked Atom is uh, is an interesting product because, um, well, it is a kind of a a match made in heaven for the Atom token. So Atom paired with staked Atom in a pool is a highly correlated asset, which is Duality's superpower in many ways. Uh, highly correlated assets very heavily favor uh, concentrated liquidity. Um, and also it's Atom. So like there are there there's a world where we actually use staked Atom to to pay fees and to to govern the to govern the duality chain. Um, so it's uh, it's quite synergistic here. And the fact that we share security um, and we also share the uh, the security model of, of, of IBC transfers and bridging, then um, I think there's there's a lot of synergy um, in that uh, in that uh, partnership here. Yeah, so you use the term uh, match in event here. I think that's a perfect way to describe this kind of relationship between consumer chain. We have uh, we have Stride, which is kind of a maker of uh, correlated assets. So they, not only you know for ST ST Atom Atom, but also ST Star Stars, ST Osmos Osmos, like they're kind of producing them. Uh, and Duality is going to be the perfect place to trade them, as as you just explained in the first part of this video. You uh, you guys are going to be focusing on that and uh, and making sure the stable swaps are as efficient as possible. Um, yeah, so switching gear here a little bit, um, or rather coming back to something we we touched on um, the um, the revenues that the, uh, the the Cosmos have delegators and validators. I think uh, the validators would be the most important one. They are the one that are going to run the duality chain. Uh, what can they expect? What do you see as potential value accrual? Obviously, this is all coming back to Adam. Uh, we've established that. But what is, what are going to be the way that uh, the duality consumer chain makes money? Yeah, so there are there are three knobs here, like three three separate points as to what this revenue consists of. One of them is application revenue, which is anything anything the application earns um, can be controlled by the by the Cosmos Hub. Um, ideally, it is returned back to um, ideally it is returned back to. Uh, back to LPs, and then you know it, it kind of is like the hub investing in itself. Um, then it's network revenue, which is any swap fees that are being earned, um, any sorry, any any gas fees that are being earned, and then there is uh, governance revenue, which is uh, a little bit harder to define, but any value that a duality token would have in theory is absorbed by Atom. So um, a way to think about this is um, if. The Cosmos Hub now has a DEX, um, and it's getting all the value from the DEX. Then it, the Cosmos Hub should be a more valuable chain, and therefore Atom should be more valuable. It's um, it's it's not as easy to define, but um, it's kind of a more speculative type value add that that brings um, that brings value back to Atom. It's not easy to define, but it's definitely there, right? Like you have these. Oh yeah, and it's probably the could potentially be the biggest one, but it's it's really hard to define. Yeah, you see these big VCs on uh, on 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 Ethereum like fighting each other over governance proposal, and uh, that's one of the reasons they hold them. And in this case, uh, you know, fighting over the duality governance process uh, is definitely going to be a, a use case for the uh, that is going to be entirely absorbed by Atom. Uh, so that that's that's all this stuff is basically extremely new, extremely innovative, and never never done before essentially, and it's going to be super interesting to see that play out. 
Um, I agree. It's exciting. So, I think uh, I think we we um, something I would like to to hear from you. You know, right now your experience interacting with the Cosmos Hub. I guess it it's sort of, it didn't fully start because you didn't put the governance proposal proposal up yet. But at Informal, we are like uh, stewarding engine security. We built engine security. We are also, uh, you know, helping the um, the consumer chain teams getting up to speed. Um, you know, supporting them in the process. I would like to hear from you what kind of uh, improvement maybe we can make in the future in terms of making sure that consumer chain feel that they are clear about what's happening next uh, and maybe improving the value proposition in general of uh, of ICS. If you have any ideas here to to, to give us, yeah, I would say. By far, the most important is making sure that the the value proposition equation is and the incentive alignment is uh, is a little bit more favorable towards validators. Um, so far, the onboarding in terms of technically getting everything ready has been extremely smooth, and uh, you know you guys at Informal have been extremely helpful uh, on that as well. Um, but a lot of the issues that interchain security currently has is, it, it, it is more around scalability and incentive alignment. Um, there are currently strides being made to mitigate those issues, and that is exactly what we want to see. Um, so strides like you know making smaller validators, um, eas easing the burden of smaller validators on on running these consumer chains, um, making the consumer chain running the consumer chain cheaper. No one wants to see the Cosmos Hub become more centralized. Again, one of its main selling points is that it's a multi-billion dollar um, security um, model, I guess. Um, but I yeah, it, yeah, exactly. And the, 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 if that's the main selling point, you, centralizing it, making it, making it, uh, you know, making it less secure is, is, is not it's not what we want at all. Um, and I, I do I do believe that interchain security uh, or replicated security. Uh, is something that can and will and should be iterated on over time to uh, to make it a lot easier for for validators to run these things. And I do believe that it is one of the one of the best ways to actually bring value back to Atom because you know without replicated security, what what is the Cosmos Hub doing other than securing Atom, a token that secures itself? Um, like this is uh, this is extremely important. And um, actually being able to onboard high value teams will make it. Uh, actually robust and future proof it for uh, uh, to actually be a, a dominant part of um, of this uh, crypto ecosystem going forward. We are absolutely aligned on that. I think the Cosmos Hub should effectively have the best validator sets across Cosmos and across the general crypto ecosystem. This is how it, essentially the value position for the Cosmos Hub is the validator set. And that's going to be a major focus this year for the informal team mm -hmm. to ensure that uh, we don't destroy it, essentially. And that uh, there's a couple of things in the pipeline. Maybe I'll have Jehan on the on the YouTube channel to talk about that and our plans there. Um, but there's definitely something we can do to make sure that uh, it's not a centralizing force and that uh, you know the the way uh, the revenue is being distributed is distributed the way, you know favors essentially the small validators. I don't want to get into it too much on this video. I think this was a, this was a duality video, and I want to keep it that way. Um, so let's uh, let's tackle that on the on, on the next one. Uh, Nicholas, thanks a lot for coming today. I think that was super instructive. Uh, I'm glad uh, I'm glad we went over this. I think a lot of people will get excited about what you told us. Um, and yeah, look, I'm really looking forward to see Duality come to life and uh, to keep working with you. Yeah, sounds good. And also just uh, just uh, sorting out that a lot of what we discussed today only really only touches the surface of uh, of, of what we can do and what what we are and. Um, what uh, interchain security brings to the table and what uh, um, what all this can entail. And I'm sure a lot more in terms of uh, in terms of uh, you know podcasts, blogs, et cetera, is going to come to light. Of course, duality's documentation will be uh, will be open and our code base will be open source uh, uh, again in probably two or three weeks. but uh, but yeah, everything's going to be there. Um, super excited. and uh, I think this is all just fantastic really, really cool stuff happening right here. So uh, thanks so much for having me. We'll have to have you back to talk uh, to, go, to go and, you know, what, what we glossed over, we should definitely address. And also maybe we can say that uh, Niklas is available for interviews from, uh, you know, all the great Cosmos YouTubers, all the threaders on Twitter. Um, I think I think we really want Duality to be out there and people to understand what, what they bring to the table. Yeah, bye, happy bye. to chat. Bye-bye.